Welcome to Endurance News. I'm your host, Andy Noyes. It is Sunday, December 20th, 2020, and I uh, just had a really exciting day in the Marathon Project. But Arizona's been the place where people have been breaking records and going fast and going big. Last weekend, of course, with the Desert Solstice, which we were all watching for 24 hours. Um, Curry, Nick Curry, won the race, and it was quite a battle. And then we had a women's race, and a few age group records were broken by Bob Hearn and my friend Jake Jackson um, for 200K, and uh, Bob Hearn was also for the 24-hour. But there was one record that kind of got overlooked because he didn't go the whole 24 hours, but Oliver LeBon, um, who's a USA 24-hour member, he broke the age group record for 100 miles, and he's in the 45 to 49 age group, and he did 403 laps in 12 hours, 41 minutes, 57 seconds. That's 737 pace. So, you know, that's like 3.15 you know, marathon pace, I believe. And it's interesting that LeBlanc's mark is fourth in the world, only behind Jonas Kuros in 2001 and 2002 and George Perdon from 1970. So that kind of got overlooked. Wanted to bring that up. And, of course, that was in Phoenix last weekend and outside of town at an Indi- on the Indian Reservation. They were running on a four-point-something mile loop. And um, great route times to be had. And so it was a historic day. A guy I've never really heard much of, Martin Hare, H-E-H-I-R, becomes the 12th American to break 209 the marathon to win the marathon project. And seven Americans broke 210, smashing the most ever in a single race. pre record was four at the 2012 Olympics trials. And the Olympic trials then was at Houston. And so we went and had seven guys do it. So pretty historic. Um, those people were Martin Hare, Noah Doty, Colin Britt Benny, Scott Fobble, Ian Butler, Scott Smith, and Mike Lacafano. And you know what? I've only know I've never heard of the name Scott Fobble. I've heard of Noah du- Drudy. He's known for his long hair, but I didn't really know um, he was a marathoner. So quite impressive, Scott Fobble, of course. So yeah, we had seven people under. Um, it turns out that Martin it was a medical school. All right now and he spent the past couple of weeks working in icu and witnessing some, some very bad covid cases and of course like i said he came seventh and he's at seventh fastest marathoner ever in 2012 one of these reporters guy from sports illustrator chris chavez said um he saw him uh win a big east cross country title and asked him in 2012 who are you and um martin now says back in january says i've been running as hard as i can ever since to make sure no one has to ask me that question again so we'll definitely never forget him now from this phenomenal performance. Really great gutsy run. And since 2012, he's won a cross-country team title, turned pro, and was actually training with the uh, Nas Elite, which is out of Flagstaff. Their coach is the one who put on this race in Arizona, the Hoka team. Um, so he turned pro with them. Then he went back to school, signed with Reebok Boston Track Club. And then he's become a dad in 2018, finished six at the trials, and had a second baby in July, and then ran 208.59 today. It's so good that he just got right under that 209. And so, <coughs> excuse me there. And um, Chris Chavez also says that he was looking through the USA all-time list, and he believes that the ninth-place finisher, Nathan Martin's 211.05, is now the fastest marathon clock by a black man born in the United States. Previous best was... Herman Atkins in 211.52 way back in 1979. Yeah, tw- 1979 was when I was uh, first started running. And Martin's PR coming in today was 214.34. So taking off of 3 minutes and 30 seconds. Pretty impressive time for him. Um, Noah Drody, he was hammering hard, coming on pretty quick at the end. And actually thought, boy, maybe he'll um, get it, get the win. And uh, then like saw him throwing up at the end. And he says... I used to be the beer drinking hero. Now I'm the puke guy. This is college all over again. And it was kind of amazing. I didn't think anybody could have that much stuff in them to finish off a race of that sort. I also saw it. I can't find the tweet that said that it's interesting that these performances today knocked Alberto Salazar out of the top 10 all-time American marathon performances. On with the women's race. And, of course, the buildup was Sarah Hall was going to be the one to beat, even though she'd only raced 11 weeks ago where she came in second in London under miserable conditions and ran most of the race by herself. PR there, so it was pretty impressive that it says 11 weeks after running a personal best of 22.02.01, 
Um, now she's run 220.32 for the win, and you know, just off of the American record, now is the second best woman all time for the United States. Um, other great performances were Kara D'Amato, who finished second in 222.56. She held back at the beginning, was kind of in the second pack that was being paced for like the uh, 225 or so, and then she's now moved up to number eight in the list. And Kellen Teller went out with Sarah Hall. She runs for Hoka Elite, and she ended up fading to third, where she ran 225.22. It's kind of like when she fell off that lead group, where Sarah and the male pacers, she was kind of in no woman's land, and you could tell it kind of hurt, but she definitely... Had a great race. Wasn't a PR, but she definitely, you know, made it a race, which I really appreciate seeing. Um, Kara D'Amato is age 34. She had previous PR for um, in 2019 was 240, and Sarah Hall in 2019 was 226. So in a year's time, 15 months later, now Kara D'Amato has run a 256. Sarah Hall has run 220.32. So pretty great news there. In fact, you know, the top 12 were all under 230. So good news for American marathoning. Um, you know, everyone was running pretty good and pretty fast. And hopefully that trend will continue. We still got lots of ways till we p- catch up with the rest of the world. I mean, the women's record is, you know, 214. And the men's record is too flat, basically. So it should be interesting to see how much better we get. For a little bit more coverage of the race, as I check out Let's Run, they always have good coverage. And they're, like I said, saying that this beat the record for the most men, um, breaking 210 in a race. Um, and it also was a deep field with 11 men, had um, PRs of under 212. So perfect weather, 30s and 40s in the race, zero wind. It was weird that they started so early, 7 in the morning, 7, 8 o'clock in the morning. And, of course, they had some great pacemakers, pacemakers, which should get a big shout-out, are Mason Fairlick and Frank Lara. And, of course, I'm sure the Super Shoes have helped a lot, but it was very fast pace. You know, they went out with that 209 goal, and nine men were on track at 35K. But in the end, Martin Hare, medical student anesthesiology, um, took the win. He runs for Reebok Boston Track Club, and he's the only one that could hold the pace. And uh, Noah... Drody, who had scratched from the limit trials due to an injury, got a measure of redemption today in finishing second in 209.09. And he definitely is chasing him from the end. And uh, definitely uh, was definitely got quite sick there. So it was kind of cool to see that. Um, the Reebok Boston Track Club may not be based in Boston. Its athletes train in Charlottesville, Virginia. Its athletes may not be wearing Reebok today. They were in Adidas shoes. But the Chris Fox coach group had itself to – a good day today going one and three with uh, Martin and Colin, who was third. Um, both these athletes were part of the Syracuse's 2015 NCAA cross country team title. I wouldn't even, I didn't know that Syracuse won back then. I kind of remember hearing about that, who you know, the coach was Fox. And, you know, they ran pretty well. Uh, Martin came in sixth in a personal best of 211.29 um, at the trials in the Benny, um, other runner Benny, was ninth in 212 14. It's interesting here. They say that Martin Hare, who won today when he got sixth in a PB of 211 29, had to take a bathroom break at mile 18. And I know how that is. My fastest marathon ever was San Diego way back when, where I ran 250. And about mile 20, I had to hit a porta potty as well. Of course, no distance race can be talked about if you have to talk about the shoes. And it says that the shoes that um, both these guys have run for Reebok, but Adidas owns Reebok, so they were both wearing Adidas shoes. And, of course, the fastest times in Valencia Marathon two weeks ago, um, the world record 57.32 was run in Adidas, and the 217 Marathon and 203 Marathons were all Adidas. So uh, the Adidas Adi Zero Adios Pro is now the shoes to beat. So Adidas now has something like the Nike shoes so it is really interesting how you've got people wearing shoes that they don't really run for. But I, did, I guess Reebok and Adidas own each other. I guess Ian Butler came into the race with a 216 PR and broke 210. So congratulations to him. That's a nice PR. And he's definitely, it says here, he's had to uh, overcome two traumatic brain injuries as a child and really saved himself through running. Very interesting article there. And so congratulations to him. On the women's side of things, phenomenally that Sarah Hall has been just having such an outstanding career, especially since she was considering leaving the sport back in 2009 when her husband Ryan was 
really running fast and one of our best marathoners. They were living in Mammoth. She really didn't like living in Mammoth, didn't like the isolation, and was about ready to give up the sport, but then realized, well, I'm up here. I might as well just keep training. And, of course, that has paid dividends because now she's come back so phenomenally over the past few years. So, you know, like I said, she was running in London, and, um, you know, there it wasn't going to be a fast race because the race dynamics getting dropped. She didn't really have a pacer. Kind of fell in the Kellen Teller. Um, but, you know, the women's record is 14 years old from Dina Castro, who was instrumental in getting people running up in Mammoth. And I believe is still up there coaching in Mammoth. And so her record was 219.36. And so Hall said she's going to go 69.40 and try and go after it. And she went through the half in 69.38. Sounds like they said the temperatures there was 34 degrees at the start to 50 degrees by the finish. And, you know, I've been I've been talking on my six days with Giannis Kuros that I've been there from December 28th to January 3rd many times, half a dozen times, and um, it gets cold, you know, and so I can definitely. But it's cool, and it's a nice drive. And I, Sarah, you know, started the whole race and ran in her singlet. Um, I know Kellen Taylor did wear a jacket, so perfect weather to run fast. In fact, it wasn't that cold because – you know, she wasn't even wearing gloves, which you often see people. And so it was good to see that um, Kellen Taylor went out hard. For, she runs for Hoka. In fact, her halfway split of 69.38 was 38 seconds faster than her open half marathon personal best of 70.16. So, hey, I'd really like to see sometimes going out hard. You know, she ended up fading to third. Um, it sounds like they're talking about that Sarah Hall, her last two 5K splits were the slowest of the race. 1647 from 30 to 35 and 1657 from 35 to 40k but by that point she had banked enough time to hold off the nor and be able to run enormous personal bests joining caster and jordan has as the only runners under 221 so that was pretty good and then of course kira demato 36 years old she went negative split she went 7140 7116 to move to 18th and not 18th eighth overall Emma Bates just missed a personal best of 225.27, running 225.40. And fifth place was a lady named Natasha Waduk. She ran 226.19 to become the second fastest Canadian in history. And she's looking to try and make the Canadian team. Like I said before, Sarah in the past 15 months has gone from a good marathoner to one of the best in history. First four minute plus BB at Berlin, I remember last year, 222, then 222.01 in London. I have 15 second PR and today 22032. So pretty amazing. Um, it says, of course, advanced technology helped Hall race in ASICS prototypes. Their answer to Nike Vapor Flies. But it's also become clear that Hall should have been in the marathon all along. And she only seems to grow stronger with each build up. 22032 will be hard to top, but we bet Sarah has got it all done. But also interesting with Kira D'Amato's story is, you know, <clears throat> she's been. You know, she was back in the, she's now the eighth best runner with 222.56. But in 220, in 2020 at age 36, she's now run 15.04 for the 5K, 68.57 for the half, and 222.56 for the marathon. She's faster marathoner now than Emily Sisson and Molly Huddle. You know, and it sounds like she ran as a post-collegiate late 2000s and then spent seven years as a recreational runner. Wow. And she, then she, in 2017, she had a second kid. And then she just started training and improved. And But it wasn't until this summer that she really took off. Today's run was a personal best of 11 minutes. The previous best is 234.24, which she ran to take 15th at the Olympic Trials. She spends on running both the 5K and 10K at the Olympic Trials on the track. And it would be awesome to see how she does. So really exciting to watch. Glad that there was some coverage. And uh, looks like uh, 2021 is going to be an interesting year for American marathoning. I think we're finally getting better and better, and that's always good news.